Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2023 California Wrestle Hall of Fame inductee, Ms. Patricia Miranda. Thank you to the California Hall of Fame organizers for this moment to reflect, celebrate, and come together. One of my very favorite things in life, one of the great privileges that I have had through the various chapters I have lived, is getting to walk alongside amazing people and getting to see and know things that other people don't get to see or know about them. I call these the silent heroes that I get to know that not many recognize, but I got to see. In my legal profession, perhaps this comes from a little thing called attorney-client confidentiality. <laughs> but I get to see people in tough stints in their lives, see what they bear on their own in silence, difficult decisions that they need to make without recognition or fanfare. It really is a privilege. In the wrestling world, it may come because we sweat, bleed, cheer, and cry right next to each other, witnessing in close proximity the sister journeys that we are all taking. However these glimpses of heroism come, I treasure them. And today, I have the opportunity to share, to sing out loud, some celebration and recognition of some amazing silent hero Californians, most of whom are in the audience today. So Karen Hyde and Gail Wasserman, can you give a little wave so folks can see you? Thank you. Some of you know a little bit about how I started wrestling. Suffice it to say that my father was none too thrilled about it. And he put up a pretty good fight in my high school years. Karen Hyde was my high school assistant principal. And Gail Wasserman was my middle school principal and later became my high school guidance counselor. During the most contentious parts of this chapter, my father had pulled me from practices, scratched me from tournaments, and even threatened the school with legal action if they allowed me to continue wrestling. <laughs> and yet, all I received was support and encouragement from these two amazing administrators. It would not have been hard for them to turn to me and say, Patricia, let's choose something else. <laughs> There are no girls on the team. There never have been. There are so many other options. And from where I was, I do not know that I could have taken on my only remaining parent and my school at the same time. I believe my wrestling story never would have happened if it had not been for the integrity and care of these two administrators. I can only imagine how many of these meaningful but largely unseen decisions you have both made throughout your careers. I want you to know, Karen and Gail, that your actions mattered a whole lot to me and to the young girl that I was struggling for answers. And I thank you for being silent heroes in your profession. And to Jose Miranda, my father, I thank you for keeping things together for my siblings and I after our mother died. As a parent now, I understand better how hard this must have been. I'm not really sure what else to say, but it must have been so hard, and I thank you. To Chris Horpel, Steve Buddy, Jay Jackson, Matt Gentry, Levi Weichel Magden, please know that my time at Stanford is the heart of who I am as a wrestler 
and perhaps as a person as well. You made that experience possible, and I have amazing silent hero stories about each one of these individuals. Sadly, not enough time to tell them uh, here, even with Matt's generously donated time. <laughs> but uh, please tune into my podcast. That's funny, because I don't even have a Facebook. Uh, but please visit me at my table or reach out to me after, because um, these folks uh, have done amazing things that not many people know that I would love to share. Sandy Fakowski. I knew her as Sandy Bocker, Stephanie Murata, Trisha Saunders, and Shannon Yancey. I knew her as Shannon Williams. <laughs> Stephanie is not here, but needs to be included with this group. These were the veterans on the scene when I was first coming around as a high school kid. When I met these folks, I knew that there were quality people involved in the women's wrestling world each on their own amazing journeys. And some even made time to be extra nice to a less than social high school kid and helped us train after their own athletic careers were over. I'm honored to be called a trailblazer, but please know that we know that it was you all parting the rough rotters in front of us. Namantha Hortigoda, give us a little wave. I'm so happy you could be here today representing the very best of who we were as a wrestling cohort, making up our own solutions, always looking on the bright side, and being each other's inspiration along the way. Next, a California institution shout out to Stanford University. With polarization seeming to be a one-way ticket these days, not many big institutions could reflect and reconsider a decision that they announced was irreversible. So, way to go, Stanford. <laughs> now I'd like to share about three former Californians, but California greats nonetheless. On July 8, 2020, when Stanford announced that it was eliminating 11 sports, including wrestling, Many recognize that this was a turning point for wrestling on the West Coast. The Pac-12s were already down in number, and with Stanford bowing out, signaling the lack of care or belief in the sport of wrestling, how long until other schools followed suit and either eliminated the sport or jumped conferences? The silent heroes that I had the privileges, sorry, that I had the privilege of watching and witnessing were the coaches at the time of the announcement. Jason Borelli, Ray Blake, and Alex Terrapelli. It was those three that recruited the chairs of the Keep Stanford Wrestling Movement. It was those three that met and strategized at least twice a week and then lived the implementations of those strategies for the 10-month effort, banding together and watching it grow from just protecting the wrestling program to the 11 sports coming together and then, in true Stanford spirit, to the 36 Strong Movement, where all 36 sports stood together and acknowledged the inherent value of all the sports, moneyed or not. And not to mention their day jobs. Coaching under COVID constraints to train their team that wrestled in black singlets and crowned a national champion. Who knows exactly what changed Stanford's mind, but I know it had something significant to do with the efforts of these three coaches. I remember them sharing about their experience when they first heard the announcement about the 11 sports being eliminated. They said it took about seven minutes for it to sink in and to solidify their resolve together that they were going to do whatever it took to save wrestling at Stanford. They said it took seven more minutes for them to realize collectively that if they did do whatever it took to save wrestling at Stanford, that they probably weren't going to be there afterwards. They pursued their mission with full hearts to preserve the sport for future generations. And the sport was saved, and they are gone from the program. 
but I got to see these silent heroes in action, and it seems fitting to celebrate and recognize them here at the California Wrestling Hall for their inspirational efforts. And now, looking to the future, Joan Fulp Allen, I know you've already been recognized, but please give a little wave. One of the things fueling the growth in women's wrestling, which is now one of the fastest growing sports in the country, is the support of wrestlers and non-wrestlers alike. Joan Fulp Allen, Kira Berry, Charlotte Bailey in Iowa, Lori Ayers, just to name a few. The sport as a whole is rising on a greater tide of relevance as more and more people understand that it's one of the most inclusive, lowest barriers to entry, character development activities that there is, and such an effective tool for educational and socioeconomic mobility and opportunity for young people. Wrestling is second to only football for the most number of first-generation college goers in the NCAA. Growing the sport for all students now will help embed this valuable sport within our national identity, and that's the way to preserve it for our children and their children. Leaders and compassionate thinkers, many who have never wrestled themselves, are joining in expanding these educational opportunities for all of our young people. So, coming from just a wrestler from back when, a big thank you, Joan and company, for taking that baton and running with it for future generations. Thank you again for this honor and for this time together. Ladies and gentlemen, inducted into the 2023 California Wrestling Hall of Fame. Is <laughs>